Hey everybody, welcome back to Intermediate C++ Tutorial 11. Today we are going to be extending the functionality of our sprite drawing routines. So, what are we going to be doing? Well, three things. First thing, we're going to be able to draw a subregion of a surface. So this is going to now allow us to do stuff like if we have a sprite sheet with a bunch of different frames of animation on an animated sprite, we can just draw one of those frames of animation. Now, the second thing that we're going to be able to do is clipping which means we'll be able to draw things that are half on, half off of the screen, which will allow us to do things like games that scroll so sprites can gradually enter the screen like this. And the last thing that we're going to be looking at is chroma key, also known as transparency, which will allow us to have pixels that are not drawn in the source image and that will allow the thing behind them to show through. All right, let's tackle the first topic of today, which is drawing subregions. Now you might be wondering, why do I care about drawing subregions? Well, here is a sprite sheet. This is often the form in which you will get your sprites, and it's just a bunch of images arrayed on a bitmap. Now. You generally don't want to draw this whole thing bam on the screen all at once, that would be stupid. You want to draw one frame of the animation at a time, so you're going to want to draw subregions of this bitmap. So I'm going to take that bitmap, I'm going to go open files and folder, I'm going to drag it into here, it is what we are going to be using today. Now the next question is, okay, so how do we accomplish this? Well, let's take a look at, this is what we've been doing up until now. Uh, we're drawing the, we have an image, we're drawing the entire image to a point on the screen. So every pixel we take from here, and then we draw it to x, y, plus its uh, location in the source. So for example, a pixel that is halfway through the first row in the source image is gonna go here in the destination, makes sense. Now what we want to be doing is, instead of uh, looping over the entire source image, we only want to loop over a region of the source image. And we're going to specify that with uh, left, right, top, bottom of the rectangle of the region. Uh, so we loop over that, and then again, we draw it to position x, y on the destination. Now, to do this, it would be nice if we had a uh, class that represents rectangles. And those of you who have properly gone through all the lessons in the beginner, know that we have a rect i class and it does a whole bunch of good stuff for us a nice class for rectangles of int type and it uses some stuff from uh, v2 which is a vector of int type so all we got to do is copy these h and cpp files from meme sweeper into our current project and this is what you should be doing in programming writing very useful modules source files that you can just take from one project and dump into the other one so copy that open up the project folder for sprite and paste then while we still have that stuff selected drag into our project and there you go all that stuff is in there now we want to write a drawing routine that only copies subregion so drawing routines are in graphics.h. Our routine is going to have a parameter of recti, so we want to include recti. It's going to be called draw sprite. We can copy this, and all we got to do here is add the parameter for the source rectangle. So we do a constant reference to source rect, recti. Create the definition, and right away, I mean, looking at the diagram I showed you guys before, we can see that this routine is going to be pretty similar to the one where we don't uh, specify the source region. So to start off with, we can copy from here to here. Uh, now we don't need the width and the height because we're not going to be looping over the entire image. We're only going to be looping over the part that's specified by the rectangle. So SY is not going to be from zero to height. It is going to be from source rec top to source rec bottom, and the same deal is going to be for X. Only it's going to be moving from left to right. Now you might think that's done it, but this is actually a big problem. So to calculate the, uh, the destination on the screen, we do X, which is the starting point of the destination, plus SY. And that works fine if your SY happens, or SX, SY. That works fine if your XX, XY happen to start at zero, because then the first pixel is going to be just at X, and the next one's going to be X plus one, X plus two. But what if you start at a position that isn't zero, zero. Let's say you're drawing from this region here, and so your start x, your start y, let's say they're 50 and 50. So you're gonna copy from here, s, x, x, y is gonna be 50. You wanna draw it to here, but you're gonna go x plus 
SX, you're gonna start drawing here. So what you're actually gonna end up with is your image is gonna try to draw to this position here. That's terrible. So we don't want to simply add SX and SY. We could do this two different ways. We could maintain separate variables for counting the destination X, or what we could do is we could just subtract the starting positions from these X and Y. And that would mean so that the first pixel copied from the source would add zero and zero. And then the second pixel would add one and two just like we want. So we just gotta correct it by subtracting the starting points from the X and the Y. Finally, let's just add some assertions in here to check to make sure that the source rect is within the region of the image. And that should be our drawing routine all done now. Let's test this shit out. So I'm gonna go to open the folder. I'm gonna find my image, which was Marl 32 by 48. That is the dimensions of each of the animations, by the way. Uh, so I'm gonna copy that. And we're gonna go to game.h, I believe it is. And we're gonna re rename that there. Toggle header code file. Now, we need to specify the region. So let's specify one of the uh, the sprite frames. So what we should have is 32 left, right is 64, then top 48, and the bottom is 96. Build that. And if we run it, we get our frame of the sprite, which should be one across and one down from the top left frame, which indeed it is. It's this one right here. That's the one we drew. You can draw it on a weird place on the screen, and the result is the same. Now the next thing that we want to be able to do is something called clipping. And what clipping is, is it allows us to draw sprites that are partially off the screen, but it will adjust them for us so that we don't actually attempt to write any pixels outside of the screen region. This is important for a number of reasons. For example, if you want to make a game that scrolls, obviously you're going to have things as they enter the screen, they're going to be partially in view and partially out of view. And you want to make sure that the out of view stuff isn't drawn on the screen because if you attempt to draw outside of the screen region, obviously you're going to have a bad time. Like if we try to draw Marl with a negative value for X here, you know what happens, you get screwed. Now there are two general cases for uh, clipping sprites. We got the top left case and the bottom right case. So let's look at the top left case first. So we've got a region here that we're gonna to wanna to draw to the screen, but we're drawing it at negative 10, negative 10. So part of the sprite is gonna be going off the screen. Now obviously, it doesn't take much to understand that we only really wanna draw this part of the sprite. So we only wanna draw this, which means we really only wanna draw this subregion here. Uh, so what we do is first off, we don't, we don't, we don't want to draw negative 10, negative 10 ever. So we have to adjust this so that it's on the screen. So we adjust the X and the Y to be zero, zero. If it is past the left hand screen, we adjust it to zero. But every, so let's say we adjust it by 10 in this direction, that means we have to adjust this rectangle by 10 in this direction to get the subregion that we want to draw. So for every adjustment we make in the uh, destination, we've also got to make a similar adjustment in the source. Now the situation is similar for the bottom right, but it's actually a little simpler. Uh, so in this case, we want to obviously draw this portion, which means we want to draw this portion of the source. Now to do this, we have to adjust this part, but this basically uh, before adjustment after adjustment the X and the Y they don't change so we don't have to adjust X and Y of the destination we've only got to adjust the rectangle here so if it's hanging over the right by say 10 you would subtract 10 from the right here same for the bottom you would subtract from that and that would get you your proper rectangle to copy over to here and you won't be going off the screen so for top left you have to adjust x y and you have to adjust rectangle for bottom right you only have to adjust rectangle and that's how she goes so to implement the clipping function we can copy this one, paste here. Now we need another rectangle and that is gonna be the rectangle to clip to. And there you go. So now we got the source rectangle, we got the clipping rectangle, we got the surface S. Again, this is gonna be similar to draw sprite. So let's just copy and paste that to start off with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna handle each of the four sides individually. So first thing we do is we check to see if the destination X is less than clip.left. 
If that's the case, we've got to adjust the, the source rectangle, the left side, by the amount of overhang. So we go source rect dot left plus and equals because we're moving it to the right. And this is going to be clip dot left minus x. Now here's a problem, we can't modify the source rectangle as we're passing it in by const reference. So what we want to do now is instead of passing it by const reference, we're going to create a local copy by passing it in by value like this. And now we can modify our clip, our uh, source rectangle. Obviously you got to uh, make that change in here as well then. So we adjust the rectangle, the source rectangle by the distance between the x destination and the clip left. And then we can just move x to the clip left. Then we do the same thing, but in the y direction. Now we have to handle situations for the bottom and the right. Now we gotta check to see whether this x is greater than this x, which is the, this is just the clip region, our clip rectangle. Now this x, we don't have it directly, but we can calculate it based on x plus the width of the source rectangle. So we add the source rectangle to this x to get the right side of the destination source rect dot get. Hmm, it seems like our recti does not have get width and get height, so let's fix that. So those are implemented like this, and now we can do get width. So if x plus get width is greater than clip dot right, we want to subtract the difference from the right side of the source rectangle. So we go source rect minus and equals, and it's going to be x plus source rec dot get width minus clip dot right. There might be some way we can, you know, simplify this expression, but it doesn't matter. And it's the same deal for y, only we replace the x style things with y style things. And there you go, we should have her all done now. Let's uh, give her a test. Now normally for the clipping rectangle you would specify, you know, the, uh, the screen region, but you could specify anything you like. So let's specify, I don't know, let's see, it's left, right, top, bottom. So let's specify uh, 100, 300, top is going to be 100 and 300, so square region in approximately the top left part of the screen. Now for the x, y, I'm going to use the mouse position so the, the sprite is going to follow my mouse pointer, hopefully. Let's give it a shot. So you see nothing here. Let's move the mouse down. Now you see it clipping out of the clipping region like this, into the clipping region, out. And there you go. Beautiful. You got shit that can scroll off in any kind of uh, clipping region you want. Now usually the clipping region that you want is the screen region. So let's add a little function in here. You know, we'll make it a static function, recti get screen rect mate. And that just returns a rect based on, you know, screen width and screen height. And that'll make our lives a little easier. Now if we want to clip based on the entire screen region, we can just do like graphics dot get screen rect. And there you go, well, now we're clipping to the screen. And nothing could be easier, my friend, no problem. Now, I just want to say, this is important that you understand this shit. It's important that you try it out for yourself. Don't just watch me and say, ah, that's easy, I got it. No, do it yourself, make goddamn sure. And if you do it yourself, if you see, oh, this is actually kind of hard, I don't think I get it, then draw some diagrams yourself and figure it out because these basic ideas form the foundations for a lot of stuff that you're going to be doing in games programming. And if you don't know this stuff cold, you're going to have a hard time in the future. So try it yourself. If you having trouble, draw pictures, try harder, and if you're still having trouble, ask for help and we'll set you straight on the Discord or on the forum. All right, now before we move on to the last task, I just want to do a little bit of cleaning up here. So first of all, we're going to go into surface.h. We're going to include recti.h. We're going to add a function get rect, and we are going to implement it thusly. Now the thing I don't like is we have three different implementations for drawing sprites and I like to whittle that down to just one central place where we're doing our code. That way if I change the way something works I don't have to change it in a bunch of different places. So draw sprite here can just call draw sprite with a source rectangle and what it does is it calls s.getRect to get the source rectangle, which is the entire surface, and then it just calls our subsurface drawing one. Similarly, the function that we call without the clipping rect 
uh, all it needs to do is call get screen rect uh, from graphics and use that as the clipping rectangle and just call this guy the clipping function and here the clipping function will now work for it'll do all the work for all these different versions of draw sprite we could also make versions that take v2 instead of x and y but I won't worry about that here now this system is great if all of your sprites happen to be rectangular in shape, but usually they're not. Like our Marl sprite here, you know, it's got a lot of curves. She's got a lot of curves to her, baby. MacBook Pro, baby. So when you're drawing the sprite, you just you only want to draw the curvy bits for Marl. You don't want a giant block that just blocks out your background. So how do we solve this problem? Well, I mean, if you look at it, the background is all a single color. It's all magenta, the shittiest of all colors. So what we can do is when we are drawing the sprite, we can do a little test and see if a pixel is of a certain color. And if it is of that color, then we say, no, fuck it, we're not drawing that shit. And that is called chroma keying. Chroma means color. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename all these guys here to draw sprite non chroma. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because it's more common to draw sprites with a chroma key than without it. So I want the uh, the more common version to be shorter. So let's just uh, copy and paste this stuff into here. And now we can create our new version, which is just going to be draw sprite and this one is going to take another parameter and we're going to call this one color chroma and let's give it a default value of colors magenta because that's the that's the color i like to pick for my chroma key because it's the shittiest color of all and the thing about chroma keying is whatever color you pick that color will never appear on the screen so don't pick a color like pure white because that's a color that's probably going to show up in your sprite pick a color that is probably not going to show up and you might say well shit i'm going to lose a color but you got 16 million colors you can give one up for the chroma key now the chroma key is going to be pretty much identical to your draw sprite non-chroma except before you do your put pixel for every pixel well first you're going to go constant color uh, source pixel is equal to and we'll just cut this guy out here paste him in here so first you load your source pixel then you test your source pixel against the chroma if source pixel is not equal to chroma then you draw the pixel you call put pixel and you call it with the source pixel otherwise you do nothing now we have a problem here and that is that source pixel or the color class does not have the not equals operator so let's go to color i'm going to collapse this to definitions and we see we have assignment operator but we don't really have uh, comparison so let's give it some comparison operators bool so operator equals const color reference right hand side constant function return now color the data of color is just a d word it's just an unsigned int uh, so we just got to go you know is d word equal to right hand side dot the word and if it is then the colors are equal now for not equals we just define that in terms of equals so return not this equals to right hand side and there you go got our operator implemented for color and now this is working fine so this should be our draw sprite function with our chroma now if i build this it should just work let's try it and here you go now you've got marl and she ain't stinking the place up with her magenta stink lines it's beautiful it's a thing of beauty let's make some extra versions for the chroma so here are the overloads that don't take clipping or source rectangles and we implement them like this, just like we did for the non-chroma versions. And that's going to do it for today's tutorial. For the homework, what I'm going to get you to do is go back to the good old poo game and replace all those bullshit put pixel compiled sprites with proper bitmap sprites. And all the graphics that you're going to need will be available on the wiki in a zip file. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++.